Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Where do you lose at? I'm, am I missing it? Somebody tell me. Look at you. Up, uh, up. Uh. <laughs> he will direct your path. So what's that a fear again? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in once again to the Church Work Confessions podcast. I'm your host, Humanly Heke. Thank you guys, honestly, for actually taking the time out, really, and like just sitting there or whatever you're doing and actually wanting to hear the words that are spoken on this podcast. I truly appreciate it. I truly appreciate the love. Um, it's it's really been amazing. Um, that I, When you guys text me and tell me that it helps in any type of way that is truly that's truly what keeps me motivated and i've said it time and time again let me not try to give you guys an entire speech today is going to be an amazing episode um i have another guest ladies and gentlemen i told you guys we're going to have guests on this podcast i told you guys um so i have my man here his name is delon lawrence um Hey guys. Yes, I was about to say hi to people, but yes, Delon Lawrence. <laughs> Delon used to be a secular producer, and you even produced for the Roots, correct? You I did, for the I roots. did. Um, and he's not going to tell you, but he's Grammy nominated. Um, and at yeah. some point, he decided to dedicate his life to ministry, and he left the secular scene, still produces, uh, left the secular scene, um, and then he's also just started a social media ministry um, on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, so, Delon, please let say say what's up to the people. Uh, maybe start with talking about you know you coming to faith um, in the first point, and then we'll get into the topic of the day. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I um. Well, first off, hi guys. <laughs> um. Yeah. I was about eleven years old. Mm -hmm when I actually came to the faith. Prior to that, I was in a Christian family, but I didn't actually believe. I actually started to get atheistic thoughts. Mm. I started to think that a lot of stuff in the Bible didn't make any sense. Mm. <laughs> and then when I was, uh, yeah, I mean, stuff just wasn't making sense. And the idea, the concept of depending solely on scripture, sola scriptura, that is a very hard thing to grasp because of the amount of things that are coming at you. You know, there's science, there's movies, there's ideas coming from all different directions. And so for me, that was something that was very hard to grasp before um, I became serious about God. And when I became serious about God was the age of 11, when someone came to our house and started giving us Bible studies while we were attending a seminar um, and to make a long story short, they had Bible studies with us, and this was the first time someone explained the Bible, went over doctrine, mm. and that's when I fell in love with God at 11 years old. So I'm here to tell you, no matter how old you are, it's never too early or too right. late to start with God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen, man. So the topics that, you know, I talked to Delon. Let me just tell you right now, Delon is a very, very knowledgeable man when it comes to the Bible. So, like, I... I, I feel like that's why I respected you because I saw one of his videos on TikTok because this man goes viral all the time. But I saw one of his videos on TikTok <laughs> and like I was like, I have to have this man on the podcast. And um, just I'm very excited for this conversation. We're going to talk about two main topics. Um, the first one being faith um, and, you know, in different facets of faith and then also talking about the character of God. Um, but let's talk about faith first. Um I know that, you know, Delon, you have an entire story of you learning the importance of faith, also like righteousness by faith and having faith in general. Could you talk to us about right. um, just your the lesson you learned? Because you said we talked earlier, you said you, okay. had, you learned the lesson. So let's yeah. talk about that first. OK, sounds good. So here's what mm -hmm. happened. I was a Christian for over, I'd say, about over 20 years at this point, mm -hmm. and I did a lot of ministry work. After I gave my life to Jesus, I did a lot of ministry work. I preached in El Salvador, preached in Kenya, saw over 60 people got baptized or over 50 people got baptized from just the work that God led me to do in Kenya. I 
went door to door spreading the gospel for a lot of my life. I did a lot of mini- um, a lot of missionary work in high school. I presented the gospel to people at the lunch table. I saw students in tears from what God used me to yeah. do at the lunch table in high school, okay? So I was dead serious about my faith, okay? So after about, I'd say 10, 12, maybe even 15 years of doing solid ministry, I now needed to make money because I wanted to get married to my fiance at the time. Uh, She's still my fiance, actually she was my girlfriend at the time. And so I was like, you know what? I gotta start making money. I spent a lot of time in ministry, time to make some money. So, so, my friend um, in Berkeley, California, called me to California to start a company with him. And we didn't know what the company will, would be. But one day, while we were talking, I mentioned to him that he should, that, that him and his wife should sell their green smoothies or take their green smoothies to the, to the doors of their community so that they could connect with the members because his wife made some really good green smoothies. So I said, take it to them for free and invite them to your church. And he kind of brushed that off. We were supposed to be starting a business. We He wasn't really interested in that at that time. And then I brushed it off too. And then before we went to bed that night, when we were brainstorming about business ideas, he came up to me and he said, dude, I know what you should do. You should sell smoothies. You should sell green smoothies. And I said, bro, you are out of your mind. I'm not a good, I'm not going to be known for selling mm-hmm. green smoothies. So... He then went on to break down how this idea could work. And the idea was we would make green smoothies, we would take them door to door, and we would ask people to sign up for these green smoothies in white neighborhoods. Okay. Or in neighborhoods. But most of the neighborhoods near us were were white. So in any case, we started going door to door with these smoothies, man. And people just started liking it. I mean, the bizarre thing was here's a black guy going to these yeah. doors in these white neighborhoods, rich neighborhoods with a green smoothie yeah. though. So here it is, black, <laughs> tall, intimidating with a green smoothie. This should not right. work. And the thing started working, yeah. dude. I mean, we we got this company to where we were making about $50,000 per month. And so God really started blessing, okay. man. And because people were subscribing to get these smoothies delivered to their house every single week. And they were paying about $14 per bottle. And wow. so God really came through. And so that was going great. But then my relationship with my business partner started falling apart. And to make a long story short, it got so bad that I ended up leaving the company with 15% of the company. And I will say this, if you're thinking about starting a business with anyone, understand that the amount of time that you put into thinking about who you're going to marry, you should put in just as much time into who you're going to go into mm. business with. Because that's a serious partnership that can leave you really stranded if you don't watch it. So that's all I'll say on that. But I ended up having to leave that company. And keep in mind, I thought I would I was going to be doing that for the rest of my mm. life. But now I was back to square one. Mm. So, so I left that company. And my girlfriend, she is from Missouri. So I moved to Missouri not to live with her, but to be nearer to her. And so I moved down here and I needed to find a job now to make money. So I found a job. I looked on Indeed. First thing that come, came up was this job working at a gym. Really nice gym. I applied for that job, got the job, was promoted three times within the first two months wow. or so working at that job. So things were going really yeah. well. So things were going really well. And... uh but after you now keep in mind after the incident that i mm-hmm. had with my business mm-hmm. partner i thought i would never want to start a business again but after you start a business and then you go and work at a random job just sitting there doing one thing over and over oh my goodness i thought my brain was melting yeah. i th- i actually thought i was getting stupider and i actually started to yeah. panic because i felt like i was getting stupider And my work ethic that I had when I was working in that company was so strong that I felt like, oh my goodness, all my faculties are not being used right now. I'm going to lose my mind if I stay here. So to make a long story short, I decided I'm going to have to leave this company. And I came up with this idea to start a company called Life Grabbers, where I would record people's life stories and have it for them 
as a package that they can pass on as an heirloom. Well, people don't like that idea. I went door to door trying that thing and people just don't think their lives are that interesting. So I left the I went I left the company that I was working at the the gym to start that company and no one was interested. So I had no source mm. of income, no money. I I only had my savings and I wanted to get married in a year, but I had nothing coming in. And I knew that I didn't want to just go and start at another random company. It just didn't yeah. make any sense. So guys, I went into straight up panic mm. mode. I started having negative thoughts That's left when it and all right. Settled in. I That's when you it said all what? settled in. That's when it all settled in. Exactly. And that was the first time I was ever in a position where I needed money and I have all these bills to pay and stuff and there was nothing coming in. So my thoughts became really negative and my emotions started going up and down. I, it almost looked like I was bipolar. One moment, moment I was happy, one moment I was yeah. sad. And then my thoughts just got suicidal. Mm. Just... One moment I would have a happy thought and then I would just be thinking, God, why don't you just kill me? Kill me right now. It was just so bad, man. What was going on in my brain was so dark, so evil, so it's just a horrible, it was a horrible place. And then God led me, and this is so crazy. I was, re I was, I started listening to the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And then God led me to read this book, Think and Grow Rich. Now, Think and Grow Rich is kind of a secular book. But the guy brought out something in there that really was the catalyst to the change mm -hmm. in my life. So as I was reading the book, I saw that the main thing, the guy talks about rich people and the path they take to get the money mm -hmm. that they want. And he said that in order to get that, they first believe that they can get that money and then they go after it with everything yeah. that they have. So he's really talking about yeah. faith. But these people don't even have faith right. in God, a yeah. lot of them. So, so God said to me, Delon, here you have these rich men that can just believe that they're going to make this money and, and go after it. And that's their driving force. And that's their yeah. driving force. But you, who believe in the God of the universe, hmm. who created the earth in six literal days, right. are sitting here panicking to the point of suicidal thoughts because you... Don't trust Something's me. Something's not right. If you're a Christian, Delon, shouldn't you be exercising faith at this time in my right. word? And that's when God showed me what it meant to believe his word. Keep in mind, I did all that ministry work. I did all yeah. this missionary work, yeah. saw God do all this amazing yeah. stuff. I'm telling you guys, I don't, I don't care what you've done for God, man. I don't care how long you've preached for. If you have not learned how to trust God's mm. word, in every situation, you're yeah. done, okay? That's what I learned about myself. That's what I learned. That's what it means to build on the solid foundation that is Jesus. He says, anyone who, hear the, anyone who hears these words of mine, anyone who hears these words of mine mm. and does them, it is he that is building on the solid foundation of Amen. the rock. And so God impressed me to put God's word in my mind, to put his word in words in my mind. Because what I realized was even though I was doing all that ministry stuff, I wasn't fortifying my mind with yeah. God's word so that in those difficult times, I should have been thinking, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high shall, he who, what I should have been thinking was the spirit of the Lord is not of fear, but of power and of love and of yeah. a sound mind. I should have been thinking, all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according that to part. his perfect will. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah. <laughs> so what God showed me was that I needed to fortify my mind with his word. So I was just putting his word in my mind. I was listening to podcasts about God, listening to, to music about God, reading the Bible all the time. And so that's what triggered my, that's what triggered this whole faith journey that I'm now on, this process of trusting God. Things aren't perfect mm -hmm. right now, but when things start falling apart, I start to think these texts, all things work together for good. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lead not, lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. These things aren't in the Bible yeah. as poetry. They're not in the Bible as stories. I love 
They're in the Bible. I, I that's love, what it is, dude. I They're love that in- you said that because one thing that I continue to try and stress is the fact that like the Bible is not simply an inspirational book. It's not something for exactly. you to read and just, oh, yeah, I am more than a conqueror. And that makes yep. me feel good. And yep. I love to even, like, when we're yep. talking about, like, whenever I say, like, the mission statement for Unassociated, like, I've added, like, not just being an inspirational company. I even say truth-telling company. You got to understand that we we are in a word mm-hmm. war. That's what we're in. Because the devil can only get to us with the words that he puts mm-hmm. in our minds. Every single day we wake up, it's about what words are yeah. we thinking. Are they the words of God? Or are we sitting there thinking, I can't, I can't because mm. I'm this way. Or are we thinking, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Through Christ, I can do all things. I can do, do all things through Christ, which yeah. strengthens me. Are we thinking that? Or are we listening to the words of Satan? Guys, you got to understand, the only way you can win in this war is with the yeah. word of God. And that's when God revealed to me, Delon, because I used to be one of those guys who would always preach, The world is ending. The world is ending. Things are going to be really bad. And then someone said to me one day, Delon, um, are we supposed to get people into the church through Mm -hmm. fear? And I said, no. And they said, well, that's exactly what you're doing. You're telling people this is going to happen. So people need to give their life to Jesus. The world is falling apart. The world is going to end. So people need to give their life to Jesus. And then it dawned on me, okay, yeah, that is uh, fear-based teaching. So if that's not what it's about, why are these negative things in the Bible about what will happen in the end of time? Why does it talk about how uh, the fall of Jerusalem was just a type of what, how bad it will be at the end of the world for the entire world? Why does it tell us uh, in, in uh, various books of the Bible that the slain of the earth will be from one end of the earth all the way to the other end of the, wor- of the earth in the end of time? Why are all these crazy things in the book of Revelation about just how bad it's going to be at the end of the world if they're not there to scare people into Mm -hmm. the kingdom. And then God said to me, they are there so that you would understand how great your faith Mm -hmm. must be if you're going to stand in the final struggles. Mm -hmm. Guys, that's the deal, dude. That's why Jesus says, anyone who hears these words of mine and does them is the one that's building on the solid foundation, man. Faith comes and by hearing, hearing come and on. hearing by the word of God. Guys, it's not enough to say I believe in yeah. Jesus. It's not en- The devil believes and trembles. Yeah. You understand? You got to hear the words of Jesus and put them into practice. And as you practice them, you will learn how to trust God as things fall apart. When you see God come through time and time again, when the world now has this crazy stuff going on, you're going to be like, look, I'm good, dude. I'm resting in the shelter of God right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just what it comes down to. So why do you think, let, let me let me ask you a question and pose it into like the second point that you, I know you wanted to make today. Why is it that you think mm-hmm. that um, it's so hard for people to trust God nowadays? Like maybe you can talk about you know, why you think it was hard for you or just in, in a general sense, why do you think it's so hard for us to trust God nowadays? There's probably many reasons, but. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So remember I said, we want to put God's word into our mind. That's how we have faith. But it's important for us to understand that putting God's word into our mind is not just about having his word in there. It's about knowing God Mm. because yeah. You see what I'm saying? So the reason why people don't trust God today is because they don't know God. They do not believe that God is good because God's word tells us that God yeah. is love. In 1 John, I believe it's 1 John 4, 8 says that God is love. And so we know that God is unconditional love. He has our backs in all situations. Nothing can separate us from his love. But that reality, people don't trust him because they don't believe that that is the case. And so putting God's word into our mind is not just about putting his word into our mind so we can think about it when things are falling apart. It's because that is the only way we can know him. So that when the world is falling apart, when our lives have crazy stuff happening in them, we can say, I know God, I've seen God, but the world doesn't trust God because they don't know that he is good. And we as Christians struggle with uh, with believing that God is good because we really aren't putting his word into practice 
into practice so we can build that faith over time. Adding on to that, I would say that it's not just that people don't know God, but it's also that people have a misrepresentation of who God is. And that can come from so many right. different angles. Like it can come from, you know, them hearing something from somebody else about what's in the Bible, because a lot of people may not read the Bible for themselves. It could come from even some mm -hmm. people who are professing Christians who do certain things. And it's just like, what? How, how could a Christian be like that? And this just goes on and on and on. And ultimately, people don't realize that when they try to when they don't go to the source to learn the character of God, then you're going to. Think exactly. up of the character of God dependent on what you see around the world. But the world is so yep. imperfect. N in, and nothing in creation, in the world or not in the world, can be a proper reflection of who God is. Because it's just like, the world is so terrible. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, if yeah, you want to exactly. know who God exactly. is, you want to know his character, then you have to go to what, he, what's, what has he said? What has he done? And so on. Exactly. Exactly. You have to experience him. You have to taste and see that the Lord is good. Exactly. Yep, exactly. And I would say, you know, I want to introduce this like next, like, you know, layer us going into of how different ways that the enemy, Satan, demons, whatever, um, demis try to try to destroy, try to misconstrue our perception of God. I know we talked about how there's three levels to that. Do you want to start with the first one? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So Satan, this is what a lot of Christians don't teach unfortunately mm -hmm. um but there's this idea of this conflict this controversy that started in heaven that is the basis of everything that we're experiencing right now we were dragged into it when satan deceived us here on earth but what we find is that satan had been out to distort god's character Ooh, you're good but what we find is that satan has been out to this but what we find is that satan had been out to destroy but what we find is that satan had been out to distort god's character since the days when he was in heaven as a matter of fact that's why he ended up being cast out mm -hmm. of heaven um, according to isaiah 14 12 to 14 it says how you are fallen from heaven o day star son of the dawn how you are cut down to the ground you who laid low the nations mm. now watch this you said in your heart I will ascend into heaven. You said in your heart, I will you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of the assembly. The mount of the assembly is where instructions was given. And so Satan wanted to ascend above God. Above yeah. God. It says in the far reaches of the north, yeah. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most mm. high God. He wanted God's power. Yeah. He wanted God's ability to make laws. Yeah. He wanted to, to supplement his laws in place of God's yeah. laws. And that started in heaven. And in order to do that, he had to cast doubt on who God is, obviously, if you're trying to take God's place. And then place. who did he deceive? You, he had to cast... And who did he deceive? What like, is that? He deceived, you know, one third of the angels at that time then. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because right? exactly. he yep, distorted yep. One their... One third of the stars he of heaven. He, he misconstrued their vision of God. And it's just like, when you realize that this is the, exactly. this is Satan's tactic. Satan does not use many new new tricks. Like, if we can yep. trace this all the way back to even, like, <laughs> before, like, so much, so far back in history, like, you know, it's just, yep. it's just insane. Exactly. Satan, the, yep, the exact thing that Satan did in heaven is what he came down to mm, earth okay. and then did. And see, see, here's the thing. We know that that's what he did in heaven yeah. also because of what he did when he came down right. to earth. So he comes down to earth. God tells Adam and Eve, in the day that you eat of this tree, you will surely die. Satan comes down and he says... You will not surely right. die. God says, of every tree of the garden you can eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you cannot eat, for in the day of you that you eat of it, you will surely die. Satan comes and says, has God said you shall not eat of every tree of yeah. the garden? God told them you can eat of every tree except for one. He says, has God said that you cannot eat of every tree of the garden? Mm. And he just completely twisted the words yeah. of God because he wants to create this image that God is limiting that God is holding mm. back something from you. I have I have a better plan than what God has. Why don't you do what I'm telling you to do? Because it says literally in Genesis, 
When you eat from the tree, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and yeah. evil. Well, guess what? God told them the truth. He told them, this is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He says, in the day that you eat of the tree, you will surely die. Said. God <laughs> shared with them the knowledge of good <laughs> and evil. He says, good is not eating from this tree and living. Evil <laughs> is, you eat from this tree, you will surely die. That is the knowledge of good and evil. But Satan made them think that God was holding something back from them. And that is the image that so many people today, today have of exactly. God. Oh, Yep. If I'm a Christian, that means I have to give up this. That means I have to give up that. And God is saying, but look how much more you will be able to do with the freedom that I've provided. Can I butt in right there? Look. Was that? Like, yep, you absolutely can. What you said is so true that that is still something today. Literally the idea yep. that, oh, like if I'm a Christian, then I can't do this, can't do that, can't do this. And we see yep. being a Christian as placing limits on what we can do because we have really like it's us thinking that one thing is freedom when it's actually bondage. You know, we think that a relationship yep. with God exactly. is bondage. He Satan has tried to misconstrue God's image so much that we today think that yep. being with him, being in a relationship with him means that I am bound. I am yep. not free to do whatever I want and so on and so on. When in actuality, you either you either are free in God or you are bound to sin. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, God says, hey, drunkards aren't going to go to heaven. <laughs> you know, you don't want to drink because you don't want to get drunk. People are like, oh, dude, but you know what I'm saying? I need to get a little bit buzzed in order to socialize, but alcohol is known to destroy families. Yeah. People think that God is putting limits on them and God is saying, no, 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 no. I'm trying to help you move forward yeah. in life. I'm trying to help you move forward in life. It, it, it's, it's a sad reality that so many people, and like you said, then people will hurt them from the church and they will affiliate everything about God with those right. people, yeah. you know? Check this out, this is insane. The French Revolution, all you guys watching or listening yeah. to this, do your research on the reign of terror and the French Revolution. What happened in the Dark Ages was that the papacy had abused their power and they became very mm. tyrannical. And then the people got to a point where they said, and these, these are the French people, the people of France said, you know what? We don't want anything to do with the Pope or the Bible. It wasn't the Bible that the Pope was following. It was his own will. Mm. But because he was claiming to yeah. be a follower of God and going from scriptures and keeping the Bible from the people to deceive them, the people thought this was in the yeah. Bible. There you have it. The devil casting on God yeah. what he himself is doing. Yes. So he's doing all this evil and he's saying, and the people are thinking that's from the Bible, but it's not. And here's what happened. The people got so frustrated with it. They said, we want nothing to do with yeah. the Bible. And a period of France's history, one of the darkest <sighs> periods ever recorded in the history of the world, of every of any country, the period was recorded. It's called the Reign of Terror. The people were so rebellious, they said, we don't even want the seven-day week. We want a 10-day <laughs> week. They started slaying. They started Man. killing. It got so bad, they started killing the popes. They started killing the cardinals, killing the leaders. They said, we don't want your help anymore. We want a revolution. The, pe the, the, the leader said, hey, we'll give you what you want. And the people said, no, nah, no, nah, we don't want what you want to give us. We don't want that anymore. We want full revolution. We want full change of everything. Mm. All because Satan cast the blame on God for he things that doing. Satan himself was doing. That's what happens. People reject the yeah. baby with the bathwater. Yeah. They should have thrown out the bathwater. Let's get rid of the papacy. Yeah. But let's keep the Bible. It got so bad, bro, that within three and a half years, it was called. It was a three and a half year period, they voted the Bible right back into their uh, system. Because things got that bad, they realized, oh shoot, the Bible actually, we need that. Literally, <laughs> but friends, literally as I, huh? as I was going, I'm sorry, I just cut you off, but literally like I oh, could no, talk to, I could talk about people that I know now that like, the reason why they're not a Christian is because in public school, what do they teach us about Christianity? Even though Jesus is the most popular, most influential human being of all time, whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, you have to admit that. We didn't learn about any any of the things that Jesus taught, at least not in my school. What we learned was that it's the selling mm -hmm. of indulgences. We learned about the great schisms. Right. And because you right. know that's what 
you know, people are taught growing up. They don't know who who God is. When they think of Christianity, they think of 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 Christians. Yep. They think of um, our faith. They only think of the corruption. When it, actually, the corruption is from the enemy. The corruption is from people's sinful yep. nature. They corrupt. It's not from God. You know, so they think that God exactly. is the reason why these happen. And oh, the conquistadors did this. The slave master did this. So that's what Christianity yep. is about. Yep. And it's like they don't yep. know yep. that they're yep. falling yep. into the same trap that Satan has put yep. angels in. He put Adam and yep. Eve in, and now he's putting you in. Yep. Yep. Absolutely, dude. That is, th those are great points that you just mm -hmm. made. The world has this conception, the world has this deception where when they hear the word Christian, yeah. they think Catholic. That part, yeah. They think the Knights of Columbus. They think the Crusades. Yeah. They think all those things. But Jesus says, my kingdom is not of Come this on, world. Man. If it was of this world, I would fight <laughs> in this world for yeah. my kingdom. But my kingdom is not. So any kingdom that is fighting physically in this world, claiming that they're of God, fighting against people claiming they're of God, is not from yeah. God. It is from the devil. Sorry to break it, like break the break it to folks like this, but none of the, you know, the Crusades, all these guys, they represented Satan. They represented yeah. Satan. The the system that they were behind was not Christianity. Yeah. That's not what Christianity is. Christianity is what Jesus brought to this planet. Grace, peace, truth, love, righteousness. That's Christianity. And uh, yeah, man, it's it's those other things are deceptions of Satan to mask uh, the character of God in darkness and in evil when in fact it's Satan who's doing so, it. So, so where we go from here is that we have to separate the idea of God that people already have that's been a misconstrued version, right? And we have to separate it with what it exactly. truly is. And like, I feel like, the best place to do that is just to talk about these places in the Bible where it truly says God is love, where it says Romans chapter five, verse eight, it says, but God demonstrates his love, his own love toward us. And that while we were still yep. sinners, Christ died for us. Like so many of us, we mm. see God, oh, God hates us. Oh, God left us. God forsakes us because I went through this, went through that. But it's exactly. just like, while we were still sinners, God looked at us, exactly. right? He he looked at all the bad things that we did in our life. And while we were like that, God said, I want Delon. I want Emmanuel. I love them. I love this exactly. person, that person. I love the person listening to this right now. And this is what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's just so many exactly. things like the devil doesn't want us to see that. They, the devil doesn't want us to recognize that. So he's going to exactly. send everything. Exactly. All right. Go ahead. Yep. It's funny because, you know, when people talk about Jesus, they say, when you ask people, why did Jesus come? Why did people, why did Jesus come? Well, Jesus came to die for our sins. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, Jesus, Jesus came to die for mm -hmm. our sins. But when you read the scriptures, as a matter of fact, let's find that text real quick. I want to find that okay, text. Which that one? Jesus says, where's that text? He says, I have finished your work. I have finished your work. I have finished the work that you've given me to do. I have finished. Was it when he was uh, being I should crucified? Know this. No, no. It was right before that I, I had finished the work. You have. Where is it? Please, please show me this. Show me that. Okay, great. Great, great. John 17, <laughs> 4. It. Yep. Okay, good, good, good. So let's, let's, let's do this. Okay, so it's interesting that you mentioned this stuff about Jesus because... When people talk about Jesus, when you ask people, why did Jesus come to earth? They say, well, he came to die for our mm -hmm. sins. While that is a big part of why Jesus came mm -hmm. to earth, there is something bigger that was happening. Remember we talked about what happened in heaven? Satan wanted to exalt his throne above the stars of God. Satan have a, had a problem with God's character. He wanted to show that he had a better character and a better idea than what God had. So he started attacking God in heaven. He was cast out of heaven. Then he came to earth and did the exact same thing. This was a war over who God is versus who Satan is. This was a war about, can I trust God or not? And so while it is true that Jesus came to, while it is true that Jesus came to earth to die for our sins, there was a greater mission that he had. That's why John 17, 4 says, I have brought you glory on earth by Finishing the work you gave me to do. Jesus says, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. But he hadn't died on the cross yet. 
It's because, now keep in mind the word glory refers to character. God's glory is his character. So what Jesus is saying is, I have shown people just how great you are, how great your character is. So Jesus was saying that he finished the work. When he said he finished the work, he was saying that, look, I went about doing good. God's word tells us that Jesus went about he doing told good. The world, this is I have God shown is. people from how I, Jesus said, anyone who has seen me has seen the mm. father. What he's saying is, listen, I went about showing people just how great you are. I, I healed the sick. I, I, I rescued the poor. I, I fed the hungry. I, I showed people very clearly that you are actually good. And then to top it off, the cherry on the cake is he laid down his life. The God of heaven, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus is God. He is the, he, it says in, in John 1, 1 to 14 that he is the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh. So Jesus is God becoming flesh. He laid his life down in behalf of mankind as the cherry on top to say, not only did I do all these good works, but I gave up my life. God maxed out his credit card with Jesus. Mm. You understand that? We got to understand that there needed to be a price paid for man. And the only way that price could be paid for everyone, this is eternal death. The only way that price could be paid is if the eternal God laid down his life in place of our eternal death. Mm that we deserved because of the sins that we committed. Man. And so that's so crucial to understand, guys. I hope you're getting this, that the only way to get over these, these, this mask that Satan is putting over God, the only way to see God as good is to study the life of Christ. You got to study the life of Christ. Jesus says, if I be lifted up, then I will draw all men unto me. He wasn't joking. The more you get to know God, the more you will be drawn, the, the more you get to know Jesus, the more you will be drawn to God. And the more you will learn that God is good, the more you can trust God as things fall apart, the more you can trust God in every single situation. But the you gotta familiar, we, we, we have to familiarize ourselves with the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. And this is why it's so crucial that we understand that Satan's number one goal is to distort the image that you have of God to keep you from getting to know the true image of who God is. That is his number one goal. That's why he doesn't want you reading the Bible. And that's why he doesn't want you praying. Because if you do those things, you will get to know God. So ask yourself, why does the Bible seem boring to me? It's because maybe Satan has been distracting you with colorful things like movies, like movies and, and, and YouTube and not that these things are bad. I'm not telling you guys you need to stop this stuff. What I'm saying is, do you know God? Because if you don't know God, there's a huge chance that you know enough about the colorful stuff out there. And you need to get to know the color that is in God's word of Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying?